Hi, so these things, microwave oven transformers, really amazingly useful. You can do a ton of good stuff with them and they're dead easy to get hold of from scrap microwaves. So amazingly useful bits of kit. There are two problems with it. One is how do you know how much wire to put in there and what kind of wire once you've got this bit out? And the other one is how do you get that bit out? Now, I've... Um, done quite a few of these and I've tried loads of different methods to actually try and get that out including methods like cutting down that weld seam. I've cut down that weld seam with a hacksaw and with an angle grinder, prized it off, tried to join it back together and to be honest it's a bit of a nightmare because even when you've got that off lifting that out is a challenge. Then I've tried things like cutting this off and um, whacking a bolt through it. That, that was really hard work. But in the end, what I came up with was cutting both of these sides off, drilling it out with uh, a drill bit, somewhere about eight to 10 mil. And then instead of using a bolt or a chisel, which basically spreads those wires and locks everything in place, what I've been using is this. It's a strip of steel. It's uh, three millimeters thick, one centimeter across, flat ended. And that works really well. It takes about five minutes to get those out. It's astonishing. Anyway, what we're going to do is just demonstrate that and take that out. Okay, it's in the vise. It's much easier if you've got a vise. They're pretty heavy, so you can do it if you don't have a vise. Uh, get your hacksaw, make sure your blade isn't too blunt. And in between this bit here, which is the um, secondary, incidentally, and it's the one with the thin wires, that's pretty much universally the one you want to remove. This one's the primary with the thick wires. But between those two is quite a gap, actually. That gap is made out of some shims that are put in there, and then this low voltage coil that runs between those two uh, primary and secondary coil. What that means is we can saw it down, going at it, but then when we get nearer to there, you just take a little bit more time and cut it out carefully, and the whole thing will come out really well. And we've got that. It comes away pretty clean. And that last little bit, saw carefully, and it'll come away like that. Okay, now we need to drill that out. Okay, I've got it on some blocks. It's an 8mm bit. I was thinking of a larger one, but this is actually quite a small transformer. 8mm will go nice through that, and you don't want to hit those sides. And then basically just drill both of those all the way through. Okay, so there it is back in the vise, drilled all the way through, and I'm going to whack it through with my bar. Now, I think the reason it's so difficult with the chisels and bolts and uh, other bits that people have been using is because these wires are packed in here really tightly. And what you'll need to is give them a little bit of room so that they can spring out and they'll just push out. So the first little bit is a bit difficult in that it takes a few whacks. and it comes out nice and clean. Okay, so here it is all cleaned up. Now that was so easy, I did a big one. <laughs> There's a really big one as well. Now the way to use these things is all to do with the ratio of turns in the coil. So if we have a look at this one, this one's one I haven't done yet, and it's got two coils in it. This lower coil, which is thick wire and not so much of it, is the primary. This upper one, which is thin wire, and there's absolutely tons of it, is the secondary. This one steps the voltage up because it's got to run a magnetron. And that needs about 2 kilovolts or so. But its supply is from the UK supply, which is 230 volts, so around about 200 volts. And it needs to step it up about 10 times. In order to do that, there are 10 times more turns in here than there are in here. So in this primary, let's say it has 200 turns, the secondary will have 2,000 turns so that we get that voltage step up. Now the voltage step up isn't the only thing that happens, the reverse happens with the amps. So if I feed one amp in here, what will happen with this, it'll be 0.1 of an amp that's drawn from here. Now what happens is, we're using an AC current, so we put a current in there and that creates a magnetic field in this block. When the current falls back down again and effectively switches off, that magnetic field collapses and pushes the current through here at the voltage that is related to the number of turns. 
Now we don't only get step up transformers like here where we're stepping up the voltage, we can get step down transformers. Okay, to demonstrate now, that, what I've got here is one of the transformers and I put a single turn of this red wire through it. This red wire is just jumper cable wire. I've attached it to my voltmeter, I'm getting a volt reading at the moment, and the other side here, I've attached to the live and neutral of a plug, and I'm just going to plug it in. I've also put a momentary switch in, so that when I plug it in it doesn't turn off, I turn on so that I have to get to the plug, I can just press that switch. And we're going to read the voltage, so I put one turn on that, and if we plug that in and read that voltage, we get 0.9 of a volt. So that's not going to do much for me, but remember this is a UK version, 0.9 of a volt. If we rewire that, so we put another turn in, and now we get 2.2 volts. So the voltage is going up because there's more turns, which means that ratio is going down. Okay, so to have a look at that effect, I've bolted on two locking pliers onto a single turn in my transformer and I've put a stainless steel nail between them and if I start that... You can see it's starting to get hot, but it took quite a long time. Now let's put two turns on. Okay, so I've rejigged it, I've now put an extra turn on that transformer and if we hit that power starts to smoke and this time we can get it really hot. Oh! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that! <laughs> okay, so that's basically what a spot welder is actually. So if you've actually tried to make a spot welder and you've put on the one turn that everybody talks about and it's not working, well, put another turn on. It's only to do with the way your transformer came from. But that gets hot enough to weld stuff. All you really need is exactly what you see here. That is something to plug it in, a power transformer, a suitable cable, and then two points that you can actually lever up and down to touch and spot weld. Or equally, we could do it like that. But that, that is your spot welder. And then a momentary switch somewhere convenient so you have control over it. But I thought I would share that with you. I hope it was of interest, and thank you very much for watching.